congratulations on the purchase of your exterior solar shade. This video will help guide you through the installation process. These are the suggested tools for installation. A Phillips head screwdriver, a tape measure, a power drill, level, wire cutters, adjustable wrench, and a hex key which is included. This is the antenna. It allows the remote control to communicate with the shade. While it is okay to move or reposition the antenna, it cannot be cut or trimmed in any way. Before you begin, you will need to determine your type of installation. If you are installing your shade on a wall or beam, as shown here, you are performing a wall installation. If you are installing your shade underneath a beam or overhang, as shown here, you are performing a ceiling installation. Your shade comes with a total of three valance brackets, shown here. You must install at least two of them. The third bracket is optional, but is recommended for shades larger than six feet wide. Before you mount the brackets, consider the following tips. The two required brackets should be installed near the ends of the shade. Do not install the valance brackets in the first two inches of either side of the shade. If you choose to install the third bracket, install at or near the center of your shade. When installing your valance brackets, you must allow at least a 1 inch clearance behind the bracket for a ceiling installation or a 1 inch clearance above the bracket for a wall installation to allow the shade to click into place. It is important to install your brackets into wood studs. If wood studs are not available, anchors will be needed. Contact your local hardware store for information on wall anchors. It is very important that your valance brackets are installed level with each other. If your brackets are crooked, or if they are not level with each other, your shade will not install correctly. Installation templates have been provided to help you align your pilot holes. To use your template, temporarily adhere it to the mounting surface, making sure that the template is flat and straight. Hold a bracket up to the template to mark your pilot holes. You will need to place a bracket on both ends of the shade and near the center if you are using the third optional bracket. Remember, the valance brackets cannot be installed on the extreme edges of the shade. You must allow two inches of clearance from the ends. Now drill your pilot holes. Remove the template when you are done. If you are doing a wall installation, the tabs on the brackets must be facing down towards the ground. If you are doing a ceiling installation, the tabs on the brackets must be facing you towards the front of the shade. Install your mounting brackets using two screws per bracket. Now it is time to install your shade. For a wall installation, start by hooking the top of the valance on the top of the brackets, then rotate the shade down until you hear it lock into place. For a ceiling installation, start by hooking the back of the shade on the back of the brackets, then rotate the front of the shade up and lock it into place. When locking your shade into place, it may help to use an object, such as a screwdriver, to press the thumb latch in. You may now plug in your shade. Your shade plugs into a standard 110 volt electrical outlet. Your remote control battery is included in your hardware kit. Install the battery with the positive side facing up towards you. Your remote control has three buttons, up, stop, and down. 
If the battery is installed correctly, the red light in the upper right corner of the remote control should illuminate when you press the stop button. When you roll your sheet up, it will stop automatically at a predetermined point. This is called the top limit. The factory default top limit is about 4 inches from the valance. When you roll the shade down, it will also stop automatically at a given point. This is called the bottom limit. The factory default lower limit is about 96 inches from the valance. Both the top limit and the lower limit can be changed. If you would like to change the top and or bottom limit, you will need to complete step 6. If you are happy with the default top and bottom limits, skip to step 7. To adjust the top and bottom limits, you will need to use the adjustment tool pictured here. Although the top limit can be changed, it is not recommended. The default setting is the ideal location for the top limit. If you would like to change the top limit, please call for additional information. To raise the bottom limit, use your remote to roll your shade all the way down. Now insert the tool adjuster into the red limit adjuster located inside the valance near the power cord. Turn the adjustment tool in a clockwise motion. Each half turn of your wrist raises the bottom limit about one and a half inches. To lower the fabric bottom limit, start by lowering the shade all the way down to its current bottom limit. Then, insert the adjustment tool into the red limit adjuster and turn the adjustment tool in a counterclockwise motion. With each turn of your wrist, the fabric will move downwards, indicating the new lower limit. If you choose to lower your fabric lower limit, we recommend leaving at least one roll of fabric wrapped around the top tube. Your shade includes a remote control holder that allows you to mount your remote control to a wall or beam. Note, if you mount your remote control outdoors, make sure the remote is never exposed to water or direct sunlight. The remote control is not waterproof. To complete this step, you will need the remote control bracket pictured here. Using the two remote control bracket screws, install the bracket with the narrow side against the wall or beam. Now slide the remote control holder over the bracket. You can now place the remote control into the holder. Your shade includes a cable tie-down system to keep your shade secure during mild wind conditions. If you will be using your shade indoors or do not want to use the cable tie-down system, you have completed your installation. If you do want to use the cable tie-down system, the following steps will need to be completed. Begin by screwing the cable into the valance. The cable tie-downs will not function properly if they cannot be secured in a straight line underneath the valance. Lower your shade to the program bottom limit. Make a horizontal mark underneath the fabric. Thread your cable through the bottom two plug and make a vertical mark where the cable intersects the horizontal mark. You may need to roll the fabric up to complete this step. You will next install the cable bracket pictured here. Begin by removing the cable bolt and cable nut if necessary. Center your bracket just below the intersection of the horizontal and vertical lines. Use the provided one inch screws and install your bracket. Now complete this process for the other side. Loosen the hex lock. Thread the cable through the cable bolt. Pull the cable taut and tighten the cable bolt nut using a wrench. And then the hex lock with the provided hex key. Cut any excess cable slack underneath the cable bracket with wire cutters.